Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Thank the Lord for who he is and all that he's doing in our lives. Thank the Lord for a chance to gather before you, his people, on another Wednesday evening. If you would join with me in a word of prayer, I would appreciate it. Father, we thank you for this moment and for this time. Thank you for the chance to be able to come before your throne. Thank you for keeping us throughout this day. Thank you, Lord God, in the midst of what we are experiencing in our city and in our state and in our country and in our world. You are greater than. Tonight, Father, we thank you for the chance to be able to open up your holy writ and be able to convene around the scriptures. It is my earnest prayer, Lord God, that you'll give us revelational knowledge of your holy word, that we not only would pray over it, not only observe the scriptures and investigate and, and interpret the scriptures, but also we may apply what we learn. Thank you for those who are tuned in and watching live. Thank you for those that will watch this at some time later. Thank you that you are God, and beside you there is none other. Now, Father, I pray that you would continue to speak to us as it relates to the topic we're going on in the month of July. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we thank you. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, let them, Lord God, be acceptable in your sight. For you are strength, and you are our redeemer. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God, and amen. Amen. So good evening, everyone. God bless you all. Hope you're having a, a great evening and had a great day. We are continuing on in our teaching for the month of July on God and money. On God and money. So the last three Wednesdays, we have been on this journey dealing with God and money from a scriptural perspective. This is not prosperity teaching or preaching. This is from a scriptural perspective. It relates to God and money. Our, our foundational text for the month is Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 6, verse number 21. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 6, verse number 24. I apologize. Matthew 6 and 24 is our foundational scripture. And it reads this way. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Once again, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So tonight, I want to continue with the journey that we've been on through the month of July and dealing with God and money. Two Wednesdays ago, we began walking through what I dubbed the God's true laws of financial prosperity. God's true laws to financial prosperity. There are eight laws that I believe from a scriptural perspective. We dealt with laws one and two two weeks ago. Dealt with laws three and four last week. We'll do laws five and six this evening. And we'll conclude next week with doing laws seven and eight. I want to give this to you at the outset. At the conclusion of next Wednesday when we are done with the teaching for the month. I'm going to encourage you to email our church address through our website at www.bbctallahassee.com. On there, you'll find our church email address. And for those who are interested in the full packet of this month's teaching, there are a portion of the teaching that we never um, are deal with. There's a financial checklist that goes along with this teaching that we don't have time to deal with this month. But I will happily send the entire packet to you free of charge for those of you who are really interested in. So we'll do that after next Wednesday. So I don't even look forward in, but next Wednesday afterwards, if you want the full packet, I'm happy to email that to you. I'm going to allow you to be able to study up on it a little bit more and apply it to your life and share it with others. Two weeks ago, we began talking about the eight laws to financial prosperity, and we dealt with law one and two two weeks ago. Law one, again, is financial prosperity comes as a result of making wise decisions. We gave you some scriptures that go along with that, and I would encourage you to go back to the rebroadcast. It's on our church YouTube page. There you can find the teaching and the verses. Law number two, financial prosperity comes as a result of diligent hard work. There are also some verses that go along with that. You'll find two weeks ago in that teaching. Last week, we dealt with laws three and four. Law number three is financial prosperity comes as a result of living on a budget. Again, financial prosperity comes as a result 
of living on a budget. And then law number four is financial prosperity comes from saving, planning ahead, and anticipating potential setbacks. Again, financial prosperity comes from saving, planning ahead, and anticipating potential setbacks. I encourage you to go back to the teachings on the 1st, the 8th, and the 15th. There are some verses of scripture that go along with those teachings that I want to make sure you are receiving, that you know that we're using scripture and not using flesh. We're not preaching about financial prosperity as it relates to naming and claiming and turn around three times. Again, it's based on scriptural perspective for us to understand the role that money ought to play and it ought not to play. Money can become a master, can become a god if we're not careful. Money is necessary to do things in our lives, but it should not be worshipped. And therefore, if you don't understand how money is seen, how money ought to be utilized, you can find yourself idolizing money. Scriptures declare the love of money is the root of all evil. So God does not be ill of you having money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Why is it evil? The love of it is because you'll do anything to get it, including step on other people. So we must be careful. It's why we're using Matthew 6 and 24, where it says at the end, you cannot serve both God and money. The King James says you cannot serve both God and mammon, which also means money. Two weeks ago, I posed three questions that I want to repose tonight. The first question was, are you working to pay off debt? Are you working to pay off debt? I want to pose that question again because it's going to be important for that question happening tonight's teaching. Are you working to pay off debt? Are you working to pay off debt? That's the first question I posed two weeks ago. Second question I posed two weeks ago is, does your credit score match your lifestyle? Does your credit score match your lifestyle? Does your credit score match your lifestyle? I know we're balling, we like to look good and drive good and, 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 and all those things, but does your credit score match your lifestyle? Because it's an embarrassment for us to be wearing the latest whatever and our credit score is embarrassing. When you're in the, in the threes and the fours, when you could be up in the sixes and the sevens and the eights, what's your credit score look like? You gotta make that a priority. Because if not, you don't want to be in the category forever where you need cosigners. You ought to be insulted. You ought to feel insulted when you got to have a cosigner. That means that you haven't done what's necessary to make sure that you have done the right by it. Now, when you're in college and you're and you're making idiotic decisions, as we all have done, those of us either in college or we're early in our young adult years and you're making decisions, okay. But when you get older and you and you learn more, you ought to do that. We ought to do better. So it's not just you. We ought to do better. We ought to be more consciously aware on what we're doing with money. All right? Second question again is, does your credit score match your lifestyle? The third question I posed weeks ago was this. Do you have enough saved up to cover at least three months? Do you have enough saved up to cover at least three months? At least 90 days. The goal ought to be 180 days, which is six months. Do you have enough at least saved up to cover three months? At least three months. This, this coronavirus that has hit our city, our state, our country, and our world has should have taught you that unforeseen does take place. It will take place. And we can't bank on government coming in to give us a stimulus payment. You can't bank on 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 your 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 landlord or your mortgage lender giving you leniency. You want to make sure that you're doing right by your money so that in times like these, you have a cushion to uphold you. And listen, no, those of us who are Christians, we know our cushion is the Lord. We know that. So we're not going to use money to replace God. Having said that, though, you want to make sure you have a financial cushion in times like these. I'm telling you, when your money is right, there's a level of peace that you have that you don't have and it's not right. So again, do you have enough saved up to cover at least three months? Your goal ought to be to have at least six months um, of saved up. So that means that what is, in one month, what is your total expenses, your total, your total, um, what's, your, what's your financial commitment for an entire month? So let's say if all your bills are paid, all your bills total up, let's say $3,000 or $4,000 is your monthly financial obligation. You want to multiply that by three, minimum six, maximum. 
You want to make sure you multiply that by three minimum, six maximum. And, and that is your ultimate goal. You want to have at least that much money saved up. So at least 12000 to 4000 a month, leave 12000 for the three months, right? Or 24000 for the six months. You want to make sure you have that much so that you know that if I were to lose my job unexpectedly, have a health matter unexpectedly, whatever it may be, you know you have enough money saved up that you can at least breathe comfortably for three months to six months when your bills will get paid and your lifestyle does not become interrupted. All right? Those things are very important, right? Let me also insert this here that I have not done the previous weeks and I want to make sure I do it now before I give you laws five and six. It is also important for us as a people, forget about race, but as a people to make sure that we have, have suitable life insurance. Make sure you have suitable life insurance. You have enough of a life insurance policy to cover your expenses because what you don't want to have happen is something happens to you unexpectedly, and all of a sudden now your family is forced to take out loans and do GoFundMe's, things of that nature, because you didn't make the proper preparations for this. Listen to me, I know you don't want to hear it, but it's true. Every last one of us have to go leave here before the director does not come, we have to leave here through a casket. Unless we get caught up in the air, as the Bible declares, before it happens, we're gonna walk out of here, leave out here through a casket. So if you know that, if we all know that we're not exempt from leaving that way, then I owe it to my family to make sure that when I die, they don't have to be stressed out about burying me or about living after they bury me. So life insurance is important. It, it's you making sure that you're using the right principles to make sure that your family can actually put you in the ground, whether you want to be cremated or buried, make sure they can actually have a proper burial for you, and then also be able to live afterwards. You understand that, that funerals bring the worst out of people. So if you can minimize the arguing over money, let, let them argue over your dresses and over your earrings, mama, and over your suits, daddy. But, but at least if you have some life insurance, that is important. And ladies and gentlemen, even if your employer offers you some life insurance, you ought to still have some your own private life insurance. Because your employers will have a cap on how much they're going to they gonna give you. If you work for the state of Florida, there's a cap on how much you're going to get in that life insurance. And you can't bank on that life insurance being enough. You want to make sure that you have some private life insurance through some kind of state farm or Western Mutual, Geico, whatever it may be that you use, that you're actually utilizing some life insurance. Very, very important. Because this is bigger than you. It's about those after you. My ultimate goal is to make sure that my wife and my children can live at the same level of comfort they live at right now in my passing. Yes, they're going to be they're going to be grieving my loss. They'll be mourning. They'll be miserable without me. Mm -hmm. I know that to be true. Life will be miserable without me around. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I want to make sure that even in that misery and their loss of my presence, that they can at least live comfortably. So the last thing I want is to die unexpectedly, and now my wife and my children, not only are they mourning my law, they're also now broke. They're also now struggling to keep the house because I didn't do right by my household. So, so I want to make sure I say that to you, especially you men of God who are, who are leading your household. You want to make sure that you are doing right in this area. Let me also give this to you, and I'll give you the last, these, these next two laws is make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you are having the financial conversation at home. Don't assume that you're on the same page financially. Talk about money. Talk about you know, how you want the money to be dispersed, how much you want to put in your savings, how much you want to be spending outside of your expenses. Have the conversation. The wrong time to talk about money is when you don't have it. It's when you have foolishly spent your money and now you're yelling at each other because we ain't got no money. Have that conversation. Talk about it. Sit down. Look at your bills. Look at money that's coming in. Have that conversation. As your kids get older, bring it to the table as well. Let them be a part of what's going on. Teach them these principles. I know even in a new day where everything is, is mobile, so you can do Cash App and GiveLify and PayPal and everything is quick and fast. But it's, it used to be a day where people wrote checks. Sat down, they balanced the checkbook. They sat down, they wrote out their bills, and they mailed them off. They used to be, that's, that's a lost art now. But those things are important because at some point, mama or daddy, your son and or daughter will be leaving your house to go off to school, get their own place, so on and so forth. And if you want them to get out of your pocket, you have to teach them how to make sure they keep money in their own pocket. 
Lord have mercy. Amen. So tonight, I want to give you laws five and six. Laws five and six of eight laws. Law number five is this. Financial prosperity is the result of listening to the Holy Spirit. Financial prosperity is the result of listening to the Holy Spirit. Financial prosperity is the result of listening to the Holy Spirit. Now, for those who may be watching this now or later, and you're not a Christian, you may not appreciate law number five. For those of us who are Christian believers, we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we understand the importance of law number five. Because the Holy Spirit will intervene timely and keep you from making an unwise decision if you heed the voice. So financial prosperity comes, it, it, financial prosperity is a result of listening to the Holy Spirit. There are some things you don't need. And the Holy Ghost is going to tell you you don't need that. There's a place you shouldn't go. He's going to tell you you shouldn't go there. There's some trips you shouldn't go on right now. I understand your desire is to go to Jamaica, go to the Bahamas, sail on that cruise, go to Hawaii. That's great. That's a great goal to have. But that may not be for this season. You may have to save up for that for another five years or so. And that's okay. Because guess what? When you are able to go, let me give you an announcement. Lean in closer. Hawaii's going to be there. Mm. Wouldn't it be great to go to Hawaii or Jamaica or the Bahamas and you can afford to go and enjoy and actually afford to actually enjoy it when you're there? It's a bad thing to spend all your money on a plane ticket and a hotel when you get there and you can't enjoy the trip because you're broke. So, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you got to say, you know what? I want to go to Jamaica in two years. I'm going to spend the next two years putting money aside for that trip. I'm going to make sure that I take care of my, my priorities and save up for that trip. So, financial prosperity is a result of listening to the Holy Spirit. Look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 6, verse number 33. We know this one pretty well. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 6, verse number 33. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. King James says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, if we heed the voice of the Holy Spirit, he in turn will help us make wise decisions and stay in line with God's will for our lives. Financial prosperity is a result of listening to the Holy Spirit. Listen to me, please listen to me loud and clear. The Holy Spirit will not let you, not lead you to some gimmick. Hmm. He will not lead you to some gimmick. You gotta be careful of today's type of teachings. You gotta be careful today's type of gimmicks. When you get lured in, you gotta need so a seed. You gotta be careful. You go to the car dealership with your hand in the car saying the name of Jesus. You gotta be careful of these gimmicks. Because you can lay your hand on that car and pray over that car, know what you've done, you left your hand on that car. God is not swayed by you doing all that type of stuff. Walk around that car three times, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. That ain't biblical. That's man-made cliche stuff. And if you get that car, can you afford to pay it every month? You get that car, can you enjoy to put gas in it when it needs gas? Think about these types of things. Sometimes you've got to start at a crawling level and, and, and build up to become a walker. You've got to understand how this works out. Financial prosperity is a result of listening to the Holy Spirit. I always find it interesting from a pastoral perspective how the saints of God will, will, will spin, 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 spin on, on their wardrobe, on their cars, on restaurants, on shoes, on bags, on their hair ladies, their nails lady, haircut brothers, will spin, 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 come out of church offering, we nickel and dine the Lord. Come on. We, we, ladies will spend hours getting their hair done. We spend a lot of money on their hair. Come to church, give God a dollar. Come on. You, you give your hairstylist a bigger tip than you give in your offering. <laughs> oh, that ought to hurt some mm. people. I hope it did. We will tip man more than we actually give to God. You understand? What you use to pay your hairstylist or your barber, God made it possible. Think about this now. Think about this now. You, you, you done bought the, the bundle, sister. You done went to her house and paid her to put the bundle in your hair that she bought. Then you give her a tip for putting the bundle that you bought in your hair. Then you come to church with your hair looking good that you got done, and you go in your purse and you give God that single, you give God them coins, and you, you complain about being broke. I find it interesting. Oh my. People that I meet 
who tell me that they, they, they struggling financially, they never look bad when they dress. Come they on. never look like they down and out. They actually dress really nice. So it's hard for me to really process your financial struggle when I see you on social media balling. Now, this is the danger, ladies and gentlemen, is danger is to perpetrate an image on social media that's not your reality. It's not your reality. Here, here's a great post to put on, on social media. Here's social media, a picture I want you to put on social media. Put a picture on there showing that you, that you don't owe nobody nothing. Put a picture out there where you show um, do, so oh zero, because you didn't pay it off. Th that's a great picture. That's a great picture. I don't care about cars that you drive and purses that you have and suits that you have. I care about that. What I care about is, is can you actually survive financially because you're doing right by your winning? Can your children make it? Now, listen, I always qualify this by saying there are some who listen to this who are, are, are barely making ends meet. So I'm not knocking on people like that. I grew up in that situation. Some of you have worked in that situation. You understand that. Do the best you can. It's not, I'm not knocking that at all. Not at all. I'm talking about people who, who bring in a good amount of money, got a closet so for you to keep pushing it in and close the door real fast. No, you don't need this stuff. You don't need this stuff. It's a hoarding spirit. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you and help you out. He will speak to you and he will help you out. He will tell you, don't do that. Don't buy that. You know you don't need that. You don't need that. You understand that most stores send you coupons because they they actually use a system to be able to monitor your shopping habits. Mm -hmm. They monitor how you come on their website, what kind of clothes you buy on their website. But guess what? If they put that on sale, you get an email. You get an email. They incentivize you to keep coming back. They, they let you know we, we, got, we got a blowout sale going on. They, they let you know that, new, that, that the fall has fall clothing has come in now. They let you know all these things, like, and you feel the pressure to rush out there. Then they let you know sale ends at midnight. So all of a sudden now you feel pressure getting for midnight. You are the perfect person for them because they know your habit. They've been studying you. Think about it. Have you ever ordered a pair of shoes off a website and then go on social media like a Facebook? All of a sudden now that same website is on your news feed. Mm -hmm. They're keeping it right in front of you. You know why? Because we shop with our eyes. We don't shop with our knees. We shop with our eyes. I see it, so I want it. So what they do, they keep putting it in front of you. Putting it in front of you. Then, then we do, do this. I do this. Then we'll go to other websites, try to find that same shoe, mm -hmm. another website, see if it's cheaper. And if it's $10 less, we feel comfortable buying it now because I got a lesser price. Come on. I mean, I need the shoes. Come on. But I want them real bad because I saw them. We are shopping with our eyes. And then you buy it, you like it, but you also feel guilty because you know, I didn't need this bag. Mm -hmm. I didn't need these shoes. I didn't need this stuff. I need this stuff. I need this stuff. Listen, my wife will tell you, I don't like going to the mall. I, actually, I hate going to the mall. If I go to the mall, I go into one store and I get about it. I don't have to walk around. I'm not, I'm not going to touch a lot of clothes. I don't want to look at that. Now. I'm not, I go and do what I got to get, get up out of there. I don't have time for all that. So therefore, I shop more online. When I do do any shopping, it's gonna be online because I don't have time to be walking around. You know? But guess what? Those of us who go, those who go in the store, they catch you at the door, and what do they do? They walk up to you and give you a bag. <laughs> and this bag is a big old duffel bag, and they're encouraging you to fill this bag up. They are nice to you. You need help? I'll be right over here, ma'am. Right over here, sir. And all of a sudden now, they they they, they have it. They they build it up for you. Build it up for you. You just every buying stuff, buying stuff, buying stuff. You, you, you grab one thing, it's five dollars. This one's three dollars. So you thinking it's good. Get to the register with that big old duffel bag that's full. That five and that three became three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, now you're looking around. You know you didn't buy this stuff. So what do you do? You give me your credit card. Because in your mind, in your mind, I can use the credit card. And so you went ahead and bought all this stuff. You don't look about the store, all these bags. And outside to the people. You got all kinds of bad. You're doing good. But you know in your head, when that bill comes in the mail, mm -hmm. I'm going to have some problems. That's it. Number five again. Financial prosperity is a result of listening to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. I don't need it. You don't need it. Not right now, at least. It's going to be okay. Every store that sends you an email that say, a sale is at midnight, guess what's going to happen? Miss that sale and see what happens. They're going to send you another email 
a week later, but another sale that's going on. That's how it works. That's how it works. Don't be a pawn in the game. That's how it works. In this season, you don't need it. You, you don't need it. Wait. Think, think about this. Think about when you see these pop-up used car places come out of nowhere. That's when they always come out of nowhere. Income tax season. They know why? They know you've got to get some money in your hand. They're going to put up a new, they're going to pop it up somewhere. All these cars, all of a sudden, you get lured in. You get lured in. Think about this now. Think about when you see a payday loan place. What do you see payday loan places mostly? In the black neighborhood. They're luring us in. We don't read the fine print. That interest rate is, 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 is horrible for you. You'll never be able to pay it back. So now you've got this cloak around your neck. you got to be mindful. The Holy Spirit will keep you if you listen. Mm -hmm. If you listen. you got to be mindful of this. you got to be mindful of this. Mindful of this. My advice to you with credit cards is simple. Once you pay off that debt, cut them up. Yeah. You, should, you should have only one credit card, in my opinion, and that's for emergencies. The, my, my advice is simple. If you can't pay for it outright, don't get it. That, that's, that's how I operate. I'm not trying to be so promoting. That's how I look at it. If I can't pay for it outright, I don't, I, don't, I don't need to get it. Because credit cards make you think you got free money and you don't have it. So you keep a credit card for incidentals, for emergencies, in case you have to use it and you use it, you make sure as soon as you, you use it, you pay it off. Don't pay the minimum $25 a month. Don't pay that thing off. Come on. Because if you get $25, only, only a ton of it goes to the principal, yep. right? Yep. The rest of it going to the interest. And so you may never pay that off. So you got to be careful in this regard. So if you can't pay for it outright, then don't get it. Don't get it. Law number six. Law number six is financial prosperity involves in intelligent debt management. Financial prosperity involves intelligent debt management. Once again, financial prosperity involves intelligent debt management. When I asked you earlier, one of the questions was, are you working to pay off your debt? That question is being posed to those who actually have debt. There are some who don't have any debt. God bless you. Don't have any debt at all. No student loan, no car payment, no, no mortgage payment, whatever it may be. God bless you, man. God bless you. Lord, no, that's, that's a great blessing. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. But for those of you, that's not your reality. Financial prosperity involves intelligent debt management. Look at Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter number 6, beginning at verse number 1. Proverbs 6, verse number 1 and 2. This is, what, this is what they get you now. New Living Translation reads this way. Proverbs 6, 1 and 2. My child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, look at verse 3. Follow my advice and save yourself, for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride Go and beg to have your name erased. That's that, that Bible now. Proverbs 6, 1 through 3. Proverbs 6, 1 through 3. What, 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 what Solomon is saying is, don't be co-signing for nobody. Don't, don't give your word that you're going to help them out with something. Don't do any of that type of stuff. Again, verse number 1. My child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt, you can co-sign it. Or agree to guarantee the debt of a stranger. It's still part of co-signing. Verse 2, you have trapped yourself by your agreement. Look at now, trapped by your agreement and are, and are caught by what you said. Verse 3, follow my advice and save yourself. For you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride, go and beg to have your name erased. This is Bible now. He's telling you in the word of God, do not commit to cosigning for nobody. Do not commit to helping or say somebody else's debt. Be careful as God. So law number six is financial prosperity involves intelligent debt management. If you already have your own debt you're trying to pay off, why would you incur somebody else's? The fact that they need you to be a co-signer to let you know they don't have the right credit to be able to get it on their own. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Be careful not to attach yourself to somebody who has a history of mismanaging money. And now you got to cloak around your neck, add on to what you're already dealing with yourself. 
When I was in college, when I was in college, I wasn't as wise about money. So I took out student loans to, 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 to pay for school because I mismanaged money that I did have for school and I took out some loans in that regard and, and, and got out of college. Um, and then I deferred the loans for a couple of years. I was you know, trying to kind of get up, build up in my career and so on and so forth. If I knew then what I know now, I'm gonna, let me tell you how I'm, and the literate I was, I've been in Tal- I was in Tallahassee and was still paying out of state tuition as a Tallahassee resident because I wasn't even aware I could change my domicile to be a resident. And so I'm paying out of state all four years of college. Yeah, you're laughing at me. If that's what happens, the other people around you can advise you. Or you're not seeking advice. That's what I'm trying to teach us during this month with the help of the Holy Spirit, that we have people around you. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the books of the counselors, there is safety. People around you who will counsel you and give you advice so that you can actually avoid the traps that people have fallen into. Law number six again is financial prosperity involves intelligent debt management. Look at Proverbs 22, verse 7. Proverbs 22, verse 7. Proverbs 22, verse 7 says this. Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. I'll give it to you again. Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. When you have debt, you are a servant to the lender. They control you. Mm. They, they hound you for their money. They call you. They've got so good these days. I, I've been told this now. I don't know if it's true or not. I've told it. it doesn't good they'll call you on a regular, a regular phone number. Not even a toll free number. They'll call you a regular number and they'll engage you in conversation. <laughs> How you doing? How's your wife doing? Everybody doing well? And you don't know who it is. They done lured you in. Hi, job. Going into all your business. I don't say they done hit you now. They hit you now. It's one, of the, it's one of your creditors trying to get paid. You've been dodging. Mm. You've been dodging. You, you know how you do it? Tell the kids, I ain't home. Mm-hmm. Listen, mom's going to tell you she ain't home. <laughs> you know how it is. You know how it is. He says here that you, the borrower is servant to the lender. Servant to the lender. Because of debt. Because of debt. And it's time out, saints of God, to be shouting loud on Sundays. With a coat around your neck. Mm-hmm. You ought to be working to pay this off. You ought to be working to pay this off. You ought to commit to yourself. That, that ought to be your plan for the new year. That will be the plan, the real plan for the rest of this year. Is identifying what my debt is. You ought to go to the www.annualcreditreport.com. Every year you're allowed to download one free credit report from all three of those companies and figure out what your debt is. Figure out what you owe. Figure out who you owe. Figure out what's going on. How do you know, listen now, you don't ever pull your credit report, you can be a victim of identity theft and don't even realize it. Yep. When, we, when I was trying to buy my first car years ago, I had no credit history. Never had a credit card whatsoever, had no credit history. I was more dangerous to the car lot than actually a person with bad debt. And here's what they told me. They said because at least with bad debt, we have a track record. When you have no debt, when you have no credit history, you are, it, I was dang, they, they didn't know if I was a, a good or bad with money. So I had, to, I had to go pull my credit report, and guess what? My credit score wasn't the best. It's really good now, thank you, to God. I'm talking about really good. My wife and I kind of compete now, so it's really good. I'm bragging about that. I'm proud of that. But at that time, it wasn't good. But here's why. Because I had things in my credit report that were like $100 overdue debt that went to the collection that I wasn't even aware of. Those type of things are worse on you. Then your then, then your then your your credit for your mortgage then that that, 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 that mortgage loan. Cause here's the thing: if you're gonna pay off a hundred dollar debts, they ain't gonna trust you with something larger. Come on. But guess what happened? I paid off that that one expense that went to collections over an incident I had in college when I got hurt. Then realized that that, that that I just didn't pay the bill. I forgot all about it. I paid it off. My credit score went up by several numbers. Went up by several numbers. And I learned through that occasion how it works. How it works. How it works. Listen to me now. They'll tell you some good debt is a mortgage is a good debt, they tell you. If you're paying it on time, it's good debt. Because the more you pay it on time, it'll happen. It builds up your credit report. It builds up your spending habits. I buy people that you should try to pay more than what actually your monthly amount. So if your car payment is $600, try to pay $700. Because that extra that goes over to $600, it will go toward the principal. Pay over what, 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 if, if you can, pay over that. Why pay over it? Because you can pay it off faster. Mm-hmm. Pay it off faster. 
That's the goal, paying it off faster. You don't get the credit, you don't get the, the loan or the credit card and not plan on paying it off, do you? If so, you shouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Pay it off faster. Pull your credit report. See what's on there. See what's on there. See what's on there. You may, you may be surprised at what's off your report now and what's still on there. Look, look at it. My, my advisor told me that, that my mortgage is actually good debt if I keep paying it like I've been paying it on time. Actually help build things up. But there's some things you shouldn't have on there. You got a JCPenney card and you and you three months behind and paying them. You shouldn't have stuff like that. Then you shouldn't have stuff, that, that stuff affects you. Mm -hmm. You in debt over some clothes you bought six months ago that you don't even have anymore. Oh my. He says again, just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. And as believer, we ought to be the head, not the tail, above only not the knee. We ought to be lenders and not borrowers. We're blessed in the city, blessed in the field. That's not reality if you are bound by debt. A last verse I want to give to you and we'll be done is Romans 13, verse number 8. Romans 13, verse number 8. Romans 13, verse number 8. Back it up to verse number 6. Proverbs, I mean, Romans 13, verse number 6. Verse number 8 is the verse I want you to actually write down. But I want to actually start at verse number 6. Romans 13, verse number 6. The New Living Translation reads this way. Pay your taxes too. All right now. Pay your taxes too. For the same reason. For government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Verse 7. Give to everyone you owe. Give to everyone you owe. Pay your taxes and government fees for those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. That's verses 6 and verses 7 of Romans 13. Verse 8 says this. Owe no man anything but to love one another. That's King James. NLT says, owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. Romans 13, 8 says, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. My only debt to you ought to be my love. That's what he's basically saying. Only debt, only debt I have is I love you. That's it. That's it. Oh, 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 man, oh, oh no man, anything else but your love. This month, I told you at the beginning of the month, it's going to be tough this month. My desire, my prayer, God knows it's my prayer, is that you are gleaning from this teaching. Even, even if it hurts you, that you are staying tuned in and you're gleaning. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to give you the packet when it's all over. That is not when you stop writing notes right now. Challenge yourself to pull your report. Challenge yourself to sit down and deal with these matters. Challenge yourself to say, you know what, for the next month, the next two months, next three months, I'm not spending any more money outside of my monthly expenses. I'm not buying nothing else. I'm not, I'm not going no more shopping spree. That's going to be there. I ain't going to no more outlets in this season. I'm going to save that money. I'm going to save that money. I'm going to save that money. Think about it now. Every year around this time, your children and my children prepare for back to school. Every year around this time, there are people who act shocked about back to school. You knew it was coming. Come on. Every year around this time, you know, Come August, school gets ready to get started back. All of a sudden, you get stressed out because kids need to shoot. They don't do everything. Now you're mad at your kids for growing up. <laughs> they don't do everything from last school term. Now you're mad at them for growing up. You knew the shoes on the last week of summer. Now you're mad at them. It's not the child fault they're growing up. We didn't do proper planning. You knew it was coming. That's it. You knew it was coming. And I'm telling you, listen to me now, stop being surprised by recurring. This stuff happens. Stuff happens. If I had more time in this teaching throughout the month, I'm talking about residual income, about working to have multiple streams of income coming in. Not just your paycheck from your job, but other streams that are coming in so that you can sleep comfortably. Do not worry about if your employees are tripping about cutting laying people off, you ain't worried. You ain't worried. You got other money coming in. We'll, we'll deal with that another time if the Lord instructs us to do so. Tonight, tonight I want to give you a charge. I want to give you a charge. And my charge is simply this. Become serious about how you handle the money that God entrusts to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're stewards. We are managers of the blessings of God. That's what we are. 
We are stewards. We are stewards. But they give an account to the owner. Lord have mercy. He's the owner. The Lord is the owner. We're stewards. He's entrusting us to manage what he owns. Mm -hmm. Hear me now. So don't get mad at me or your neighbor if he trusts me or your neighbor with more to manage than he trusts you with. Mm -hmm. He knows your track record and he knows mine. It's time out because mama and daddy, if we don't get our house in order financially, we're the next generation who has just as bad and not worse habits than we have. Think about it now. Think about it. So tonight, we prepare to pray. I pray that you have received the word of the Lord. I encourage you to go back on our church YouTube page. You can go there, Bible Based Church Tallahassee. Get a teaching from all this month and previous, previous teachings. Take time to learn this stuff. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, for the chance once again to be able to teach from your holy ring. I'm not preaching and teaching financial prosperity by way of naming and claiming. I'm not a prosperity preacher. We're preaching biblical principles with scripture to support that we as the people of God will be mindful and wise in how we do things. It is time out to be shouting on Sunday and then going home stressed out about how we're going to make things meet. It's time out for it. We have to start listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we give you praise tonight, honor and glory. I thank you for the people of God, wherever they may be. We give you praise. Thank you for Bible-based church. Yes, Lord. People, I'm happy to be able to pastor. Thank you for what they are even now, oh God. Continue, oh God, to keep your arms around us as a local church. Even in this season, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We always say to each one of you, God blesses upon you, my brothers and sisters. Remember this now. Don't just be blessed. Live blessed.